What's up guys? Welcome back to Investing PH. Today we are going to evaluate one of the largest branded food company in the Philippines. I think almost every Filipino out there knows their products. This is Century Pacific Food Incorporated or CNPF. Let's see how well this popular food company is doing and find out if it's a good investment or not. So let's start. Once again, this video is for educational purposes only and merely cite my own opinion. And this is only a quick get to know the company, so it shouldn't be used as basis for your investing decision. Please still do your own analysis of the company. And before we start, I would really appreciate it if you would smash the like button and if you still aren't subscribed, might as well click that button as well. So who is Century Pacific Food Incorporated? CNPF is one of the largest branded food companies in the Philippines. They engage primarily in the manufacturing, packaging, and canning, marketing, and distribution of processed marine, meat, milk, coconut, and plant-based products. Now let's have a quick preview of their products and its contribution to their total revenue. By the way, all of this information is in their website. I really suggest you take a look at it. Well presented nicely. First is their marine food. One notable brand that is really popular is Century Tuna and 555. So this takes up 33% of their total revenue. So this is the largest source for them. Now their tuna product is the number one here in our country with an 84% market share, which is really a big percentage. And it has increased from 81% last second quarter of 2020 up to 84% this second quarter of 2021. With that alone, we can see consumers really trust their brand. It's like they already have monopolized the canned tuna business in the Philippines. Next, their meat and plant-based products. This takes up 24% of their total revenue. Again, another popular brand and this one is also leading in terms of market share in their corned meat product. Higher compared to last year as well. Another proof that consumers trust their products very well. Now for their plant-based product, this is still new, which is on meat. It will compete with large brands here in our market, one of which is Corn Foods, which is owned by Monday Nissin. And this is one of the largest plant-based meat company in the world. So let's see how well Unmeat would do in the years to follow. Still, this is a great business since plant-based meat is getting popular nowadays because it's both beneficial to the health of the person and as well as for the environment. Next is their milk and other products, which takes up 24% of their revenue and for their coconut and other tuna products with 19% contribution. So for their powdered milk, they are number 2 in terms of market share, which takes up 22%. With that, this is the breakdown of percentage for their different products. Now with their 3 main brands, their market shares in our country is really high. This lets us see how trusted their product is by Filipinos. And a good sign is, it has increased from the past years or had stayed consistent along the years. So not only they are keeping the loyalty of their consumers, but also attracting new consumers along the way. This is really important to take note on in this kind of competitive business because this is one great advantage for the company if they have a high market share percentage. This means their brand is really well trusted by consumers. And sometimes when you trust so much the brand, it's hard to switch to other brands or products. So if they continue this up, the better their product is trusted, the higher market share percentage they can get the more their earnings will increase in the future and the more they can expand their business. Now for their newly introduced product which is the plant-based meat, since it's actually new, let's see if it will do as well as the others in the years to follow. Now for their plants, of course, in this business, they should also improve as much their efficiency in producing their products. We can see their energy consumption has slightly increased along the years. But in 2020, their efficiency metric which measures how much energy they consume for every tonnage of products produced improved by 3%. And this year, they have also completed commissioning a 5.2 megawatt solar plant in their facility at which they can get more than 60% of total power requirements for their tuna and coconut facilities. For their water consumption, they have also improved by 5% in 2020 and they are targeting further improvements this 2021. Now this is really important because savings in their manufacturing part can really compound throughout the years benefiting the company because this can lower their expenditures which means more net profits for them. With more net profits, they can further expand their business and improve more their products and facilities. So it's a good thing to take note on how the company is becoming more efficient in producing their products. Moving on, they also have their products being sold internationally. So right now, CNPF products are available in 80 countries. 
With this, the company's revenue source expands as more and more people get to know their products, not just in our country. With that, let's move on to their financials. Now, I would still be following my checklist in valuating this company. To further understand each line of my checklist, I suggest you watch my other stock analysis videos as well. Now, these are only a few things to look at in analyzing a company since this is just a quick get to know the company. So you can add more lines to your checklist to further understand and analyze the company. With that, let's go to their income statement. Now what I want to see here is for revenue and net income to be increasing as the years goes by. And of course, how well the company is producing net profits from their revenue. First, let's look at their revenue. With this, we can see ever since 2014, the company had been consistently growing their revenue with a compounded annual growth rate of 15.41%, which is really good. For their latest 12 month, they already have a growth rate of 3.91%. Now there are still a few months left this year. Let's see if this would grow more in the second half of 2021. Moving on to their net income, same as their revenue, they had been consistently growing ever since 2014 with an annual compounded growth rate of 16.01% and in their latest 12 month already have a 12.14% growth, which is really great. If you look at their net income margin, we can see it's averaging in the 7-9% to region. Now, the company's income also benefited from the newly implemented CREATE law which lowered their tax rate. Anyway, with that, we can see both revenue and net income is growing at a good rate, growing at a compounded average of more than 15%. So this one is a check for my list. Moving on to their balance sheet. Same as in their income statement, we want to see if the company is growing their equity every year. With this, we can see they had been growing their equity since 2014. Even in this pandemic, they still had a positive growth. With this, their compounded growth rate from 2014 is at 23.06%, which is really high. For their 3-year average, it's also above the 10%, with 13.96% compounded growth rate. So this is another check for me. Moving on to their return on equity. Now this shows us how well their management team is using equity to produce net profits. The higher the percentage, the better. I usually look for is a 15% ROE although above 10% is already somewhat good. So for CNPF, their ROE average is 18.3%, which is really great. Another check. So again, be careful in looking at ROE because if a company is using more debt, then they can have a higher ROE. So with that, we move on to their debt to equity ratio. With this, they have a debt to equity ratio of 0.76 for their latest 12 month. So I follow this guide. My maximum here is 2. So the lower the number, the less risk we are taking. With that, this is another check. Moving on to their cash flow statements. Here I look at how well they are doing in their operating activities. And of course, do they have a positive free cash on hand? Just like their equity and income, what I want here is for this to be increasing every year. With this, we can see there are some years that have negative operating activities and negative free cash flow. Now, negative cash from operations means that the company spends more in their operations in providing their products and services compared to what they are earning. So this leads to having a negative free cash on hand, at which we can see in 2018. Although right now, they got back on track, which is good. But what I want to see here is a much consistent growth. Moving on, let's see if they can pay up their long-term debt using their free cash on hand in just under 3 years. With this, their latest 12 months, they have an FCF to long-term debt ratio of 3.64, so slightly higher. Now for 2020, they had a ratio of 0 since they have no long-term debt during that time. Although this is sort of higher than what I want, their long-term debt is really low. What made the ratio higher is their low FCF. So this is an X for me. Now let's check if they are handling their short-term debts well. This is a current ratio. So their current ratio is at 1.90. What I want for this one is for this ratio to be at least well above 1. So this means CNPF has a 1.90 peso of current assets for every 1 peso of current liabilities or 1.90 peso of assets for every 1 peso of debt. So this is another check. Moving on to their PE ratio. Right now, they have a PE ratio of 22.76. So we are paying 22.76 peso to earn 1 peso. Now what I want here is for this one to be below 15. If it goes past beyond that, then I would valuate even more if it's worth buying at that high of a ratio. Will the company's earnings catch up to its price? So with what we saw a while ago, the company's earnings is growing at a good rate. And of course, to further analyze price ratios, because not every company that has a high P ratio is expensive. 
especially when that company exhibits a higher growth rate. That's why never look at PE ratio alone. You have to combine it with other valuations as well to analyze if the company is worth buying at this ratio. For me, I combine PE ratio with my intrinsic value computation since I'm putting there my growth projections for the company. Anyway, I'll show you what I think my buy price for the company. So for now, this is an X for my list. For their dividends, the company regularly pay out their dividends. Had a slight increase in 2020 and 2021. Their dividend yield for the price right now is 1.31%. Next, does the company have a moat? What is their competitive advantage towards their competitors? Now one thing is for sure, Century Pacific has strong products. Their brand is solid here in our country. Just looking at their total market shares in the canned tuna, they have a solid 84% market share. And this had been consistent throughout the years, almost a monopoly in the canned tuna business. As for their corned meat, they have 47% market share, almost half, and they are number one in this field as well. And in their powdered milk business as well, which they are number two in market shares. Now in these three main products, they have consistently gained this much consumers along the years. This just means they got the trust and loyalty of consumers here in the Philippines, which is a great competitive advantage for them. In the powdered milk, they are also gaining market shares from 2% in 2016 up to 23% in 2020. So keeping their loyal customers and adding in more. With this, the more their market share would increase, the more their income would steadily increase along the years. For their leader, this company is led by the Poe family, which is its founder as well. So with how well the company has grown ever since, Ricardo Poe Sr. established the company. And of course, his sons also has a lot of experience as well. Their executive chairman is also the chairman of Shakey's Pizza and also handles different companies. Their president and CEO also serves as vice chairman of Shakey's Pizza and has held various positions in CNPF ever since 1990. And their vice chairman as well has a lot of experience in the company. And one thing that is good about the leader being the founder, most likely their goal is really to improve the company that they founded. And they really know their company better than most outsiders or just hired CEOs. So lastly, is it within my buy below price? My computed intrinsic value for them is at 27.67. With a 30% margin of safety, I have a buy below price of 19.37. So its price right now is well beyond the price that I want for it. Now in my intrinsic value computation, I use more conservative growth rates that I think the company can really accomplish as the years go on. This way, my margin of safety is wider. Now, this answers my question, is it worth buying at around 22 PE? Now, since this video is just a quick analysis of the company, if I really like the company so far, I research this further. And I also look at my other valuation method as well. Then that's where I conclude to just wait for the stock price to go down my comfortable price. But sometimes, there are companies that are really hard to evaluate because some of your ratios are saying this is undervalued and some say it's overvalued. That sometimes happen. That's why every investor has different thoughts about the company. So don't take my word for this one and still use your own valuation method. Run it through your checklist thoroughly if you're having a hard time deciding whether to invest or not in that company. With that, CNPF only failed in four of my checklists. In the long-term debt, they only failed by a small margin. Right now, the price for this stock has been rising consistently. Well, we can see why since it's one of the few companies here in our country that wasn't much affected by this pandemic. They even had a positive growth since their products are still in demand. But again, I still want to get that right price that I want for it. With that said, this ends my analysis for this company. Again, this is just a quick preview of the company. There are still more to look at to further analyze it. So if you like this company so far, then further research it. Anyway, if you like the video, would really appreciate it if you would click that like button to support my channel. So thank you again and see you in the next video.